she, she said that usually international students don't get into med school. So mm. that was something that she just, it kind of just shut how me did down. You, yeah, that was, I was going to ask so, you, how did you feel about that when she said that international students don't get into medical school? Well, I felt defeated. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace Patrice and you are watching the Pre-Med Hub. In today's video, I have a very special guest. You, you've seen her here before. And today's today's video, we're going to be talking about something else. As the title suggests, Frida number one got into medical school. <laughs> and even to top off of that, she got into medical school as an international student which i think is so fascinating given the barriers that international students face mm -hmm. when they want to go into medical mm -hmm. school so this is just a sit down chat to learn about her journey how she got into medical school what she did differently and even more importantly the advice she has for incoming international international students. medical yeah. students so let's get right into the video frida so can you like kindly introduce yourself to our viewers and sort of like tell them your journey to medicine Okay, hi everyone. So my name is Frida, and like Grace said, well, we met at UVA. So that was like, she met me at some part of my journey, but I started school in Ghana and I went to Fantaman Secondary School. <laughs> Grace went to Wesley Girls, but yes. we went down the street. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> but anyway, um, so then uh, I came here for 11th grade in high school, and I came here to a high school. Uh, it was like a boarding school, so it was really good for college prep. Mm -hmm. And then they helped me. Um, just kind of get my foot in and how American education system works. And then I got into um, UVA, which is where I met Grace. And in undergrad, I remember when I went to undergrad, I mean, honestly, I feel like my medical school journey has been a bit not traditional mm -hmm. because I, I I initially wanted to be a doctor. Then I got into undergrad and I was like, do I really want to be a doctor or am I, am I just doing it because I think that's the only thing I can do. So then I had a bit of an internal struggle of like, do I really want to do this? And in the midst of that struggle, I started seeking advice on like medical school and how to get in because I had no idea. No one in my family, you know, had ever come to school in America, let alone gone to school as a medical medical school student. So I had no reference point. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to the advising, like college advising in um, UVA, they have pre-med advising. And I went there and I remember asking the lady like, oh, you know, I want to, you know, what do I do to get to med school, basically? That was my yeah. first year. Like, what, mm -hmm. what do I do? I have no idea. What, what, what is the process like? She, she said that usually international students don't get into med school. So mm -hmm. that was something that she just, it kind of just shut how me did down. You, yeah, that was, I was going to ask so, you, how did you feel about that when she said that international students don't get into medical school? <sighs> Well, I felt defeated because it was like, then why am I here? <laughs> because then I might as well go back home because if international students don't get into med school, then what am I doing spending four mm -hmm. years in the undergrad if I could just go home and do six years straight for med, for like, med, for med school? So I'm going to a DO school, which is most people go to MD schools. Uh, so DO is kind of like, not a lot of people go to DO schools, but I met one DO doctor and it was just like, I think, because I was really conflicted yeah. like I said like I didn't know if I could get in and also I was like do I want to do medicine and so I met this doctor and he was just had a seminar he was at a seminar and I didn't know what DO was because I mean in Ghana most people don't know what DO is so DO is a doctor of osteopathic medicine so in America they can practice equally as a doctor of allopathic medicine which is MD mm -hmm. and they can do basically any anything you want to do as a DO you can be a surgeon I've met DOs who are neurosurgeons I've met DOs who are general surgeons I've met DOs who are psychiatrist so you can do anything with like a do degree mm -hmm. any specialty that's like the first thing i want to let you know um but then because <laughs> i think some people are really conflicted because they're mm -hmm. like do i even want to do do what can i really do with a do degree but you can yeah. do anything i've met people with different specialties um so then i met this doctor he was a family care doctor at the community health center in charlottesville mm -hmm. and he was talking about do and he was so passionate about it and i was so excited i was like wow i like this and i think one thing that he told me that really hooked me in was like he said do's look at the whole the holistic nature of the body they look wow. at everything mind body soul and wow. i was like hmm i like that like i just i was just curious and i'm a curious person i like to you know seek more information. information so then i was like i like this osteopathic thing and then i went to him after the seminar and then i was like can i shadow you so that was like kind of my time of like trying to get back into like 
this medical school journey mm -hmm. and then i shadowed him for like a couple of weeks at the same time i also happened to find a doctor in uva hospital who was a Ghanaian, and then she let me shadow her but she worked in the pq which i shadowed her i shadowed him and honestly i really loved his philosophy uh, but um so it was it was just like such a great opportunity talking to him and i was like okay so i can do this like you mm -hmm. know it was kind of like that seed was planted like it's not impossible like i can do this and then I remember to the college advising people, and then once again, they were like, you know, it's just, it's just impossible. Like, <laughs> they were basically like, it's, you, it's very rare. Okay, first of all, Frida, it's just very rare. And also, like, you, you can't get really, you can't really get funding. It's like very, very rare. Like, you know, you have to prove that you can pay. That, all these things, they're basically trying to like say, like, you don't really want to do it because you waste money, you won't get in, all this stuff. So guys, that was definitely something that was a letdown. Um, and so then throughout my college career, after that, that was like my third year now. And then once again, I came to a crossroads in my fourth year, where I was like, do I want to do this medicine thing? Because now I'm like graduating, right? And I have mm -hmm. to like pick a career. I have to pick something to do next. I can't just tell my parents that like, um, I don't know, want to travel the world or something. It's not that kind of lifestyle. <laughs> I don't have that kind of, not that yet. kind of, yeah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so then basically I was like uh, telling, I was deciding and I prayed. Um, so that's one thing that I think really helped me. It's like I was praying to God, like, God, I don't know what to do. Do you really think I should do this doctor thing? And I was like, in a way, I was just saying, like, God, send me a sign. And at that time, I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Now, now right now, I'm not certain what path I'm going on. Mm -hmm. But back then, I wanted to be a psychiatrist. That was what I was going to do. And I wanted to be a DO psychiatrist. And I was like, is that even possible? Mm -hmm. So that was my mindset. I was like, is that even possible? Like, how many DO psychiatrists are there? Okay. And so then I remember I was just sitting in the library. I don't know if you remember Clark Library. I do. Um, with the long, yeah, so I was sitting on one end. I remember specifically, I was sitting on one end. I was just like, my head was like on the table because I was contemplating like, this is my life. And then I had my laptop open and I was like, you know what? I'm going to search up doctors in the psychiatry department and email them. Like I'm going to spam email them and ask them if I can shadow hmm. them. Which is what I did for Dr. Dudako. That's how I got to shadow her. I just emailed her randomly. Hi, I'm an undergrad student. I want to shadow you. And she was like, okay. Like that was sure. how simple it was. Yeah. Uh, so then I, so if you are in a university right now that has a hospital affiliated with it, hmm. search Let the doctors know. and email them from your school email address. Because when they see that at, so for us it was at Virginia or EDU. EDU. Once they see that they think that's someone in the system, I'm going to look at their it's email. It's easier for them. It's yeah. easier. And you have their email because once you have access to the school's database, you can look up their computing, well, for us it was computing, computing ID. ID. So I looked up their computing ID and you just put in your email. Email, mm -hmm. I emailed like 10 of them and one of them got back to me, which was Dr. Dudako. So it's like, you can just like email a bunch of them and just say like, say your story. I'm an undergrad student. I want to study medicine. I don't know. I want to learn more about medicine. Can I shadow you? Yeah. Simple email. Uh, can I shadow you? Worst case, they won't respond, which a lot of them did not. That, the respond. one that responded, that's like all that matters. That's all that matters. So, yeah. hey, that's one advice I'll give you. As an international student, don't limit yourself in your mind that because you're an international student, you don't have certain privileges. You have access to the same things that the citizens have, especially when it comes to undergrad. Because you are in there, and at that point, you're an undergrad. Everyone is an undergrad. So mm -hmm. take advantage of like the pre-health advising. Take advantage of like the doctors in your school's hospital system. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of the doctors that are in your um, like town. Like you know, it's like take advantage of that as well. It's like because they are in the town, so mm -hmm. you can email them. Um, okay, so then, uh, so where was I? Uh, so then, basically, I was at my crossroads in yeah, life, crossroads. contemplating my life, mm -hmm. and then I, I was searching. I was like, okay, I'm gonna search for psychiatrists, and I searched for psychiatrists, and so I was looking for someone I could connect with because they do that. Cool. The good thing was like her last name was Ghanaian, so I was like, okay, this woman is Ghanaian. I feel like. I have a higher chance of her letting letting me shadow her. Mm -hmm. Um so then I was looking, I was like, maybe I'll find another Ghanaian who's a psychiatrist. Or I'll find someone who is like at least a black woman mm -hmm. that I can like connect with. So I was searching through and then I saw this one doctor, she was a DO psychiatrist in the UVA hospital. She was the only DO psychiatrist in the UVA hospital. I was like, this woman, oh, you, you and I, we must meet. Because <laughs> I was like, this is what I want to do. So at that point, I was like, that's exactly what I want. I want to be a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and I want to be a DO. And this is exactly, this woman fits my mood. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. Her name was Dr. Meredith Lee. And I remember that time, she didn't even have a picture there for her thing. So I had mm -hmm. no idea what she looked like. I just took her email address. I, I think at that point, I didn't even email anyone else. I, Took her email address. Mm. I was like, I just prayed, and this woman she a was deal the only one she was the only deal that so I, I wow. was like, I'm gonna email her. I took her email address, and I so guys, this is another important thing when you want to shadow doctors, approach it with humility. 
they don't want to seem like you are privileged, like you're entitled to their time. Mm. It don't seem like you're entitled to them letting you shadow them. Mm. So then basically I took her email and then I, I emailed her and then I was like, I would love to be a deal psychiatrist. You are everything I want to be basically. Please, can I shadow you? And then days later, she emailed me back and she said, unfortunately, I don't have space oh for my you to God. shadow me. I really thought you were going to say that. Don't worry, the story doesn't end there. Oh! <laughs> that was a plot twist. Well, um, hold on a minute. So, the story doesn't end there. So then she said, unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't shadow me. I don't have any space in my schedule. And I was just looking at him. I was like, mm-mm, this cannot be. Because in my mind, I was like, if I just prayed and I opened my laptop, and you're the first... Like mm-hmm. Dio Sakaja see. Mm-hmm. You and I, we need to meet. <laughs> so basically I emailed her back and I was like, that is unfortunate. Oh. But would you like to meet for coffee? Because at the end of the day, I was genuinely interested in her story. So I was like, mm. I just want to know more about you. That's so powerful. Yeah, I was the just like cons- like you, you just didn't give up, like she oh, said. Oh, please yeah. don't give up. As international <laughs> students, guys, you cannot give up. You cannot give up. That's the one thing I would say. It's like a lot of people told me you can't give up, and I was like, oh, whatever. But no, for real, you can't give up. Like, be tenacious. Like, you can't give up. Persist in the goal. You, so then I basically was like, please, I want to meet you for coffee. Like, I just want to chat with you. This whole doctor, this whole doctor and the psychiatrist was like, yeah, sure. I want to meet you for coffee. Let's meet. When? And then we just met for coffee, guys. That was like when I knew God was on my side because I met this lady for coffee. We talked for so long. She told me all about her life story, how she became a DO, how she actually was out of undergrad for like six years. Mm. Then she went back to go to DO and now she's like, she was at the time the president of the like Virginia Psychiatry um, Association. And this Psychiatry Association was made up of MDs and DOs and she was the president at the time, right? And I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know this about this woman. So I mean, I was just going there, innocentia, naivety. So then (laughs) I talked to her, we had the coffee and guys at the end of the coffee time, I was like, wow. Thank you so much for meeting with me. This was mm. amazing. Mm. And you know what this lady did? She reached into her bag, pulled out her planner, and she looked at me. She said, you know what, actually? I think I might be able to fit you in for some shadowing. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And then she said, do you have a car? Because at that time, she was a doctor for geriatric psychiatry. Oh. So then that means that she went to nursing homes oh. all around Charlottesville. And mm. even out of Charlottesville, like she used to drive like an hour or so out. Anyway, guys, so then this is where the story gets good. So then this lady, I said, please, madam, I don't have a car. <laughs> that's why I didn't even have a driver's license. I was like, please, I don't have a car. And she's like, okay, that's no problem. I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up and then we'll go together. Wow. I said, what? She was like, yeah, I usually go three times a week. What days work for you? Wow. I was like, any day works for me. <laughs> At that point, I, I was. I can climb my schedule. At that point, yeah. I was like, madam, I can skip class. <laughs> any day works for me. Let's go. Yeah. Um, so then this lady would drive to my dorm which was hereford mm. pick me up in her car we would spend like over an hour driving together chatting in the car i had like an hour just chatting with this doctor and then we'll get to the the nursing home and she'll tell me all about the nursing home guys it was a favor of god because wow. i don't know what else it was she'll tell me all about the nursing home she was so excited she's like okay so you are my patient it's like now this woman wanted to wanted me to be there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, she, you remember the first email she said I, I don't have space to shadow you now she's telling me Come with me. She's picking you up for She's a ride. She's picking me up, dropping me off. Oh, Lord. I think we even had lunch at some point. I can't remember. But <laughs> so at the end of that day, the last day we were going to do it together, because it was the last semester, or my last semester. So it was like my first semester of fourth year. Oh. And so I was like, oh, thank you. So like, I remember that she pulled into the... So at the time, guys, in my mind, I was like, my recommendation letters are going to come from the first DO doctor I shadowed, who was Dr. Gilbert. Mm. I really liked his style. So I was like, I'm going to ask him for a recommendation letter. And then my, like, faculty. And so then this lady pulls up into Hereford and I'm like, oh, thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank you for all your time. This has been life changing. Like I was basically saying like, I love you. Like, you know, thank you so much. I was like, you're everything I want to be. And I can't believe you let me shadow you in this special way. So thank you. She, like I knew all about like her fiance and all these things. So then I was like, thank you so much. Like, you know, yeah, great. And then just when I'm about to leave the car, she's like, well, you know, actually I can, I can write a recommendation letter if you want. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I was sitting by somewhere. I was about to leave the car. Like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to add with a girlfriend. This lady just looked at me. She's like, I can write your recommendation to you want. And I bet she wrote you you, an excellent one. I mean, I haven't read it. But I can (laughs) show you, I can show you a screenshot of the email where this lady clearly says in her first email to me, I do not have time 
to let you shadow me or write you recommendation letters. I'm sorry. That was her first email she sent to me. And yes, oh, when you had even asked. This was the time that, yeah, the time that I asked to shadow me. She already shadow told, told me before. before that she doesn't have time in her schedule. So she doesn't have time to, to, and then, to, to, and then, to shadow and, and then. In the recommendation letter, so she was basically saying like, oh, she already has so many people like mm. already, so she doesn't have time. And then now at the end of the, the shadow experience, she's asking me if she can write to me. I said, you're asking me? Please, yes, please. I'll take two. <laughs> take three <laughs> so guys that was amazing so that that's just to tell you that as international students you have access to people around you don't let don't let the pre the pre advices like put you down because they are just trying to be realistic they're just trying to be plain with you that it is difficult in the sense of like when i was applying for instance <laughs> I applied to only DO schools, which I mean, a lot of people don't do. A lot of people apply to MD and DO. Um, so, hey, I'm not saying go and do that. But <laughs> at the time that I applied, so the first time I applied, I applied to MD and DO. And to be honest with you, I really, I really enjoyed the DO philosophy. And so I was, the second time I was applying, I was like, let me just be honest with myself. I don't really enjoy the allopathic like philosophy. Of it. There's not much of a difference. But for me personally, I was like, I really want to be a DO doctor. So it's like, why am I trying to mix in MD with DO if know, I know that I want to do DO? Yeah. So then I was like, okay, I'm just going to look at these DO schools. So the first time I applied, mistake number one that I made that you shouldn't make is I applied to the schools kind of blindly. Hmm. I didn't really do research on like, I didn't do in-depth research on like if they take international students or not. So that's where the limitations come in. It's like in undergrad, there's not a lot of limitations. The classes you can take, the people you can shadow, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of limitations when it comes to that. But then mm -hmm. when you are applying to med schools, you want to make sure the schools actually take F1 visa international students. You know, okay. you want to make sure you're clearly asking them that. Um, so that was my my first mistake because the first but the first round that I applied, I didn't ask that. Mm -hmm. So then there were some schools that like got back to me and they were like, we don't take international students. Mm -hmm. That was when I, sh I don't know if I shared the story with you, how I called the school and I was like, oh, um, <laughs> how far with my application basically? And then the guy was like, what's your name? So he looks me up, he's like, oh, you have nice stats. I don't know why you are not, um, you don't have an interview, interview. yet. And then <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, basically in my head, I was like, I don't know either. I mean, you are the ambitious person, tell me. Duh. And then he was like, oh, you're an international student. Oh yeah, we don't take international students. But they hadn't even bothered to email me and reject me. Or they didn't bother to email me and tell mm -hmm. me that. To me, I was here certain thinking, my application is in, I'm it's in line for an interview, and it's not. So then that was my mistake. I wasted money, guys. I wasted so much money applying to schools that didn't take international students. Some schools will get right back to you. We don't take international students. But they've already taken your money. They won't give it back to you. Like, your secondary money is gone. Um, so basically, the next time I applied, I called... Uh, yeah, I think emailed, you should share yeah, this. I should like, share the call, list, yeah. yeah. Not even share, like, share this, this part of the story. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think it's so yeah. powerful. Yeah, tell them what you did. <laughs> okay, I will. Um, so then there's, um, there's, I think there's a list of about 50 new schools in America, I think. And I found that list on Reddit. There's, like, a Reddit community called um, RP Med. And so there was a whole list of like all the DO schools in America. Mm -hmm. And I took that list and I was like, I'm going to work from this list. So basically, I either called or emailed the school. Oh, for sure. So first I called. If I didn't find a way to get to talk to someone, because it was during the pandemic. So sometimes they'll tell you that, oh, our office is closed, so you won't be able to reach. So those schools, then I'll email them. Mm -hmm. But all of them, I would call first. And I remember that time I was sick. <laughs> like I was also falling sick at the time, but hey, mm -hmm. you got to push through. Yeah. So I called each of them and I said hi you know good evening good morning good afternoon do you take international students and then some of them said yes and I'll say do you take F1 international students mm. and then they'll be like oh no actually no we don't we take um we take uh, non-US citizens like people on the green card I'm like that is not international anyway so then <laughs> I was just a hang up and go my way. <laughs> but um, basically... So I was just like, well, you didn't know what an international Yeah, guys, was. you have to verify. Like, be like, mm -hmm. F1 visa. Whatever visa you want. Make sure you mention, like, F1 visa. Do you take F1 visa? Most schools that do take international students, it shouldn't be hard for them to answer that question. Because mm -hmm. they should know what an F1 visa is. If they don't, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. If the school doesn't have an international student's office, that's another red flag. Because how are you going to process my visa? <laughs> You don't know what kind of visa I'm using. How are you going to help me? So that's another like red flag <laughs> that you should be looking out for. If the school doesn't have it's international so funny office, they have international office. It's true, but that makes so much sense. I was like, are you like what are they going to tell me? How will they process your visa? So basically, that's something that I did the next time. It's like calling each school and saying, 
do you take international students? And then I had my sheet. <laughs> I can share my Excel sheet. And then green for yes, red for no. I did everything. I came up with 13 schools that do take international students, confirmed with me either verbally or through email that they do take international students. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna work with these 13. So I applied to those 13 schools and I didn't hear back from all of them, but then I heard back from three mm -hmm. um, who gave me an interview. And guys, those odds are already pretty good because people apply to like 20 schools. You know, they have, most American students have access to 20 schools. Some of them to apply to 50 schools, but that's the story for another time. <laughs> but basically, you know, you have access to like, all these Yeah, schools. on your credit card. It's like, on whose money? <laughs> um, so basically, I applied to all these um, schools. And another thing that did help me that I forgot to mention, so mm -hmm. I do want to mention this, is that I actually got to talk to some international students who were in UVA Medical School mm -hmm. at the time, and that really pushed me. That gave me the motivation to apply. So I'm like, look, there are people from Nigeria in uva med school um so like i was saying so i applied to these schools and then i got into um i got into i got interviews from three and then um depending on when this video comes out <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure right now but currently i'm wasted for two waitlisted for two and then accepted to one but that's just my experience you can get accepted to five guys it's like that's just my personal journey i have a friend who got accepted to I think five or something and she's a international she applied to md she got accepted to like five schools and these are like really top schools um ucla is on there she got into georgetown she got into other schools that i won't mention because i didn't ask for her permission <laughs> to share this information but i'm sure she wouldn't mind but it's just like it's not impossible right like this is my personal story i applied to do which is also very specific mm -hmm. and then md is more broad so you even if you do that you have even more opportunities mm -hmm. um so now when it comes to i think you want to talk about funding mm -hmm. yeah so with funding too i know that there's a lot of anxiety surrounding funding um i would like to say that there's there's actually scholarships out there from international students and it seems like the business office usually tell you that there's no scholarships but there are you're so coming you in with the details <laughs> so this is just something i was sharing the pro with tip, you. Pro the tip. pro tip pro tip something i've learned from a friend of mine is um she told me recently about a story how she got a full ride to go to a, like an md school as an international as an international student, student. She and got two full rides. Two full rides, yeah. I won't mention the school just because for in case Security before, somebody, purposes. Yes, before somebody comes to hold my neck that I applied and I didn't get a full ride, please, I beg you, it wasn't me. Um, so that was my friend's story and I was like, wow, it really motivated me because I was like, hey, she's on television, she got a full ride. So don't give up on that scholarship. Call the admissions office, ask them, be honest with them. You don't have money. Tell them you don't have money. Ask them that you tell them you really want to come to their school. What can they do for you? Be, be upfront they accepted you that means they want you you understand me like don't, first of all don't, i didn't say go and ask before you get accepted though <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to say i'm poor <laughs> don't go in there and they're going to be like i'm poor please will you even accept me no 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 when it comes to the acceptance process international i'm just going to be honest with you at first i used to think that they had like a maybe they won't accept me because i'm an international student the truth is that they actually don't look at that when it comes to the acceptance process mm. they will take you and then later on you will be the one who will say i can't pay or something like that but usually when the school takes international what they do is like they take all the applications as is mm. you are in there okay guys like imagine like why am i getting waitlisted for these schools why am i even getting interviews i'm sure there are citizens out there you know who have my stats and so it's like why mm -hmm. wouldn't they take the citizens instead mm -hmm. so they look at you like you are normal so that's what i'm saying like if the school takes international students hey you are going in there like go with them that you <laughs> too you are somebody you understand me so go there like yeah doesn't matter citizenship now because we are all here and then when you get in you can go and call them and say since you took me i know you like me what can we do not in those words but you know what i mean <laughs> so basically it's like be bold be confident because once they take you oh my goodness they like you know it's like if someone has accepted you to their school guys it's a big deal grace and i applied first round rejected boom even Grace's story was even kinder me i got waitlisted <laughs> and then they rejected me the day that classes started guys that's a story for another video but <laughs> most people don't know this about me but that was the truth it's like the first time i applied i got waitlisted got rejected literally as classes started 
a whole life story around that and then the second time i, I applied I, I got accepted so you know it's not easy to get in but once you get in know that the school actually wants you there and they want you to be part of their incoming class that's okay. that's perfect i just i loved it i think you said all the very important things okay. all the things that people had questions about so thank you so much for being here You're welcome <laughs> and for sharing your story which is just um you see the goodness of God in the entire process. Yeah, the favor it, of God. The favor of yeah. God in everything with his leading and his guidance mm -hmm. on everything. So I just really appreciate you for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, yeah, I hope you really did. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell button so you don't miss notification. Once again, this is Grace Patrice and you are watching the free... <laughs> Once again, this is Grace Patrice with my very good friend Frida, and you are watching the Freeman Hub. <laughs> bye bye.